went to Halloween party wearing a revealing outfit. When I got back home, he had planned revenge. Hello, everyone. My name is Eva, and it's almost Halloween again. Every year this comes around, I think of what I've done, and I figured it's probably better to let it all out. I should probably start at the beginning of the chaos. My husband works for a big tech company, and he had to take a pay cut to start working from home a few days before our wedding. This was because I got into an accident just days before our wedding, and I couldn't walk. But Brian didn't care. We walked down the aisle together with me in a wheelchair, and he took care of me for a year before I could get back on my feet. He is more than what any woman could wish for. In his attempt to reintroduce me to society, he took me to a party his company was hosting, and I met his boss's friend, the CEO of a fashion company. His boss was happy that Brian would be finally coming back to the office, and they had a lot to talk about that night. But it was his boss's friend that had an interest in me. Mr. Davis wasn't shy with his words. He outrightly told me that I have a beautiful body, but I was hiding it underneath ugly clothing. Hearing such a thing after over a year of pulling myself around in a wheelchair was both a confidence booster and an ego bruiser. I was happy that I was beautiful enough for a top fashion icon to give me compliments about my body and beauty, but the fact that he said I was wearing too much clothes and called the clothes ugly couldn't escape my mind. He gave me his card and told me to call him for a reinvention. Little did I know that was going to be the grease on which I would slip and fall. I suppose Brian saw the joy in me that night and felt he had done something well enough that deserved some intimate time between the two of us, but I pretended to be too tired to do anything. Oh, I forgot to tell you. Brian and I hadn't consummated our marriage. First, it was because of the accident. I mean, we couldn't exactly make love when I couldn't even stand on my own two feet. Then it was about my self-esteem, which had been low since I was able to walk again. I felt I wasn't beautiful enough or worth looking at in the way Brian wanted to look at me. Or maybe I was just making excuses, I don't know. Regardless, I was still looking for a job, so I was now home alone since Brian had gone back to working in the office. I was bored, and I kept looking at my clothes in my wardrobe and looking at myself in the mirror. And before I knew it, I found myself calling Mr. Davis, telling him that I was ready for my reinvention. He was happy to hear this and invited me to his company for a fitting. The first skirt I was given was so short I wouldn't be able to bend and pick anything. I wore that with some fluffy crop top and heels. And when I stood in front of a human-sized mirror, I couldn't believe it was me. I felt beautiful. I felt powerful. A tear rolled out my right eye and Mr. Davis was proud of himself. But he didn't stop there. He gave me some more clothes to try on. Each one more sultry than the last. I loved every single one of them and I didn't even know which one to choose. I would walk back and forth so he could see how the outfits looked on me, and he was impressed each time. When we were done with all the testing, I went to him and told him that they were all pretty, but I couldn't take all of them, so I'd just buy three. He laughed his lungs out and told me that those outfits weren't for sale. They weren't even in the market yet. They were just his personal experiments and that they were all for me. My tongue almost fell out my mouth. He was giving me all the clothes I tested that day. They were three times the amount of my current wardrobe, which was already a lot. I was still in awe when he said that he had a proposition for me. I was happy to hear whatever proposition he had. After all, he just offered me clothes and shoes that would have been worth several millions. He told me that the clothes and shoes were mine regardless of my decision, but that more than half of those clothes would never be worn with the life I live, and I wouldn't be able to show off my worth. But if I came to work for him, the reverse would be the case, and that he would pay me handsomely. I couldn't believe it. He wanted me to be an escort, someone who simply follows him to premieres, parties, and shows while wearing his clothes. I was flattered, and the money was so impressive it almost matched Brian's pay. But it wasn't just about the money. I just felt seen by this icon. It made me feel special, like I could do anything. So without even hesitating, I agreed. When I went home, I didn't know if I should tell Brian because I didn't want him to get the wrong idea especially given the kind of clothings I was going to be putting on for the job. So I decided not to tell him, not yet at least. I didn't have it in me to do that. So I put the clothes in a bedroom we weren't using. The first time Mr. Davis called was when he was going for a movie premiere, and he wanted me to go with him. He told me exactly what you wear, and I did that. By the time I walked into the venue beside him, all the cameras turned to us. It was like I was this celebrity with the world at her feet. Mr. Davis was happy with the results that night. Everyone kept asking about the dress and asking who I was. I never gave anyone my name, but a lot of people gave me their cards, hoping to work with me. My life felt like a dream. Attending balls, premieres, fashion shows. 
It was like nothing could ever go wrong. I tried my best to hide my new identity from my husband, and given that he was always working, he didn't have the time to notice things that were well hidden. I couldn't imagine how he would feel if he found out that his wife was going around half naked before cameras and hundreds of people. But you know what they say, there are three things that can't be hidden for long, the sun, the moon, and the truth. On Halloween, Brian was going out, he had work, and he spent a long time apologizing about how he wouldn't be able to spend Halloween with me. Since he was back in the office, his boss was drowning him in work. And that was working very well for me, especially because of my life as Mr. Davis's walking mannequin. Brian asked me what I was going to do in his absence, and I told that I would simply hand out candy to the children who would come knocking. He laughed and gave me a kiss on the forehead, telling me that he would see me the next day, and that he loved me very much. Then he finally left, and I felt relieved. I had so much to do in preparation for that night. Mr. Davis had sent over a dress, and terrifyingly enough, it was Brian who received the package. He was the one that signed in my stead. I was honestly just lucky that he wasn't the nosy kind. If not, he'd have looked into the package and seen the most sultry dress yet. I was to dress as a more physically appealing Harley Quinn. I began doing my makeup because it was going to take quite some time. I finished and I got dressed just in time for Mr. Davis, who came to pick me up himself. He looked at me and said that he knew he made the right choice when he asked me to be his escort. His compliment was so special to me that I felt my heart burst inside my chest. We were going for a Halloween party. The outfit I was wearing wasn't just revealing. I was more flesh than clothes. I'm glad I met you, he said, placing his hand on my legs. I felt my hormones and nerves firing up with that simple touch. I felt like I was living on the edge and I could do anything, which was why I wasn't thinking about the consequences. I and Mr. Davis were locked in a staring contest when the car came to a stop and the driver informed us that we had arrived. By the time we got out of the car, it was like nothing I had ever seen. There were people dressed as celebrities and icons from the past, characters from the movies and comic books. Mr. Davis was dressed as Julius Caesar. There were paparazzi everywhere and I felt a fright in my body. The same fright I felt every time a paparazzo took a picture of me. I was frightened that perhaps Brian might run into the pictures of me. I got past the paparazzi and into the party. There was loud music, alcohol. Mr. Davis and I took a seat somewhere, and it was as though the tension that was cooking between us in the car only got worse. We were talking, and before I knew it, his lips found mine, and soon his hands were all over me. And the next thing I heard was my name. I pulled away from Mr. Davis's kiss and embrace, and I saw Brian standing there with his boss. Brian was frozen, as was I. I called his name in subtle shock and asked what he was doing there. He shook his head in disappointment and turned to walk away, but then I sprang up, calling his name. He refused and continued walking away. I pursued after him, trying to keep up. By the time I met up with him, he was in the alley at the back. That was when he finally stopped and looked at me. He examined me from head to toe. What are you wearing? He asked with frustrated anger inside him. I told him that it was a Halloween costume and he shouted at me in anger. He told me that I was naked and that what I was wearing didn't qualify as clothing. I told him that it was part of the job I had with Mr. Davis, and he was even more dazzled. He couldn't wrap his head around the fact that his wife just said that part of her job description was dressing like a street worker. He yelled at me, telling me that I was married, and a married woman had no business going around dressing the way I was. It was a heated argument. Other than my dressing and the fact that he caught me kissing his boss's friend, he was especially pissed that I got a job and I didn't tell him. I told him that I didn't tell him because I knew that he would try and stop me and that was when he lost his mind. He told me that since I wanted to be loose, then he'd be loose too. He left. I went back home, and he had found my wardrobe of clothes that Mr. Davis gave me. I knew because I saw the wardrobe open. I expected him to burn them, but he didn't, and he wasn't in that room either. I thought he went somewhere to sleep for the night, but when I got to our room, he was sleeping there. I was quite startled. I tried talking to him, and he simply told me that he was tired and needed rest, but it was all okay. I was even more terrified of this chilled mood he was in. The next morning, I tried talking to him again, and his answer was, You can do whatever you want. You're an adult. It's absolutely okay. I understand. After all, it's just a job. He prepared for work and left. Mr. Davis didn't call that day. I was at home when I got a notification on my phone. I thought it was a message from Mr. Davis, but it was a notification that my husband had posted on his Instagram account. He never did that. The last time he posted anything was over a year ago, and it was our wedding pictures. 
Before that, he hadn't posted anything but pictures of his laptop while working. I had opened his notification and found a picture of him hanging out with his boss on a yacht. There were girls in bikinis everywhere. There were so many pictures that I kept sliding for almost a minute. My eyes popped so wide I nearly screamed. When he came back that night, I asked him where he had been and without even blinking, he told me that he had been at work all day. I couldn't believe this guy. Straight up lying to my face. I pulled out my phone and put the pictures in his face, asking him if this is what work looked like. He didn't even skip a bit as he confirmed that. He said that his boss took him to his yacht, so he worked from the yacht while his boss invited some people over. He then asked me why I was looking so worked up. I didn't have an answer, so I told him it was nothing. That night, I heard him making a long call. The call lasted almost two hours, and it was filled with giggles and I miss yous. I couldn't sleep. There was nothing anyone could say to me to convince me otherwise. Brian was cheating on me. The next morning, I asked him who he was on call with, and he told me that it was his ex. My knees felt weak after he said that. If that girl had her way, she'd lock me up if it meant being with Brian. But luckily, he chose me. So why was he suddenly talking to her and telling her he missed her? He refused to give me any explanation. He said we were all adults and that we could do whatever we wanted. That night, I got several notifications from his Instagram account showing that he was at a strip club. I almost had a heart attack. I couldn't understand what had come over Brian. This wasn't the man I married. I looked through his account and he had been posting nonstop hanging out. And when I went down, he had deleted our wedding pictures. It was more than I could tolerate. I decided that if this was how he wanted to play this game, then I'd play it too. I called Mr. Davis and he told me he was honestly shocked to hear from me, given the last encounter with my husband. I told him that Brian understood that I was just working. He was impressed and told me that he was having a ball that night. Of course, I jumped at the opportunity. I went and all the while we were sitting together, I kept praying that Mr. Davis's hand would land on my leg like it did that Halloween night. The ball ended and nothing happened. He dropped me off at my place and I asked him if he'd like to come in. He refused. It was like he had decided not to be sensual with me. I asked him if I wasn't beautiful enough for him anymore. But he assured me that I'm still the most beautiful woman he knows. After which he drove off. And I was shocked and didn't understand what was going on, but I felt an itch that needed to be satisfied that night. So I boarded a taxi and went to my ex's house, which was two hours away. I knocked on his doors and he was shocked to see me, but I knew Daryl still loved me. So of course he welcomed me with open arms when I kissed him out of the blue and he took me in, locking the door behind him. We had the time of our lives that night and I was more than satisfied. The next morning I left his house and just as I was about to cross the street, I saw Brian standing across and my muscles froze instantly. He had this smile on his face, not the happy kind, but the I knew it kind. I hurried to him and asked him what he was doing there. He said he just wanted to confirm his suspicions. I asked what suspicions and he told me that he wanted to confirm how bad of a wife and a person I was. He told me that he knew where I went the day I had my accident. I went for one last hurrah with my ex, Daryl, and it was on my way back that I got into the accident that crippled me for the first year of my marriage. When he said this, I staggered back, shocked. He knew and he didn't care. He took care of me. He said he hoped that I'd leave everything in the past after I got married, but clearly that didn't happen. He said he knew everything. He knew I lied that I was a virgin and that I refused to be intimate with him because I didn't want him to find out I lied. I was shocked. He told me that he never cheated on me. He never called his ex. The pictures in his Instagram are photoshopped. He has always been loyal, but I have never been loyal or truthful and he honestly thought I would change, but in his words, a leopard can't change its spot. He told me not to come back home and that it's okay between us. Before I could say anything, he got into his car and drove away. I couldn't believe it. I think I've lost everything. What should I do? Please help me. I really love Brian. I don't know why I did what I did. Update. Hello everyone, it's me and I'm back again. The last time I posted here, I received a lot of judgment from a lot of you. Please, I do not need that. Stop sending hate my way. I am already going through a lot. I did something wrong and so did many of you. I am not perfect. You're not perfect. No one is perfect. And please stop saying I don't deserve forgiveness. I do. Everyone does. Although my husband has refused to forgive me, he said there's no going back and I don't blame him. I understand the hurt and pain that I have caused him, but given the situation I was, the temptation was inevitable. And I wish I could go back in time and right all my wrongs, but I know that's not possible. But I still pray and hope for another chance. 
I have cried and begged Brian because I can't bear the thought of losing him or navigating life without him, but he doesn't buy my apologies. He said I knew exactly what I was doing and that I don't deserve him. And that's true. Brian is the best husband for anyone, and especially me, but that doesn't mean I don't love him. I love him and I still want him back. But there's nothing that I can do to change his mind because he has filed for a divorce and he's so serious about it. I was so desperate to the point that I had to go to his boss and begged him to plead with Brian to take me back, and unfortunately his boss also shared the same view with him. They can't see beyond what I did to Brian. It's so sad and I don't know what to do anymore. I hate myself for doing that to him, for ruining something so perfect. I tried to move on, but I couldn't. I even went to Mr. Davis, but he denied me any job opportunity. He dumped me as well. He told me that I wasn't qualified to work with him. He said he doesn't like to deal with women who throw themselves at men, and he had liked it when I was not desperate and he was the one doing all the chasing and touching. I don't even know what to do anymore. I didn't know where to go after Brian rejected me and Mr. Davis refused to work with me. So I lodged in a hotel for a while and exhausted the little money I had, so I was left with no choice than to move in with Daryl, my foolish ex. I hate him so much now and I can't believe I risked my marriage because of him. A man like him that can't even take care of me. He is very broke and he is busy flirting around with other women right in front of me and he is claiming I don't own him and we are not dating so he can do whatever the hell he wants. If I dare speak up, he would shout and boast of how he let a rat like me in after everyone I had abandoned him for, threw me away, and that I should know that he is the only useful person in my life and he will always be and I should never forget it. But that's his point of view because the only thing he was useful at was on bed, but now that irritates me the most. He treats me like a slave, makes me do all the house chores, wash his clothes, and even take care of his witches. He also makes them mock me, but I don't have a choice, because I don't have anywhere to go. I'm stuck here still hoping that maybe this is not the end of everything for me. But what can I do? Nothing. No one would talk to me. Even my family members are ashamed of me. They didn't even care about me in the first place. Now I know the only person that truly cared about me was Brian, and I can't believe I did this to us. I don't know how to forgive myself either. It's hard going through this phase of life. So this is my life now, pathetic Eva. Broke, jobless, and homeless because this place that I am living right now is worse than prison. I cry every day because there is nothing else to do than to regret my actions all over again and again. I pray for the strength to survive as life goes on because the weight of guilt and disappointment in myself is dragging me down. I just want my husband back, but I know deep down, that's not possible. Anyways, I appreciate everyone for their opinions, advice, and comments, both good and bad. And thank you for reading my story. For now, I'll just try to hang on and hope for better days ahead.